Hello and welcome to chapter one in your Pharmacology Clearance Simple. This is for module two of your Pharmacology ALH3 course. For chapter one, we're going to be able to define all key terms. We'll talk about listing three societies critical to the development and evolution of pharmacology. We'll be able to list four sources of drugs and list 10 drugs and be able to record their sources. Let's start with the history of pharmacology. Pharmacology comes from Greek words pharmakon, meaning medicine, and ology, which means the study of. Drug is from the Dutch word drug, which means dry, as in the use of dry herbs. An interesting fact, pharmakon also means both poison and remedy. The first society we'll talk about is the Chinese contribution to pharmacology. So the Yellow Emperor's Inner Classic is one of the first documents on the yin-yang and on acupuncture. And the first Chinese manual on pharmacology was written in the first century CE. It included 365 medicines and 252 of which were all herbs. And Chinese medicine, as you know, is still alive and well today. The next society is the Middle Eastern contributions to pharmacology and the Ebers Papias. It was written circa 1550 BCE and it lists about 700 recipes for a host of illnesses from crocodile bites to psychiatric illness. The Al-Hawi is a large 20-volume medical book, and it was written by the physician Al-Razi in ancient Persia. It's translated into Latin in the 13th century and greatly influenced medicine in medieval Europe. Through trial and error, these ancient cultures discovered treatments for many conditions. In addition, the act of passing on those discoveries by writing them down was priceless. And again, all of these things impact how we do things today. So let's do a little comprehension checkpoint. Which contribution did the ancient cultures make to pharmacology? If you selected D, they discovered treatments for many conditions and put those discoveries in writing. Then you selected the correct answer. Let's look at some pharmacologic advances through the 19th and 20th centuries. So looking at healers, healers were chosen based on their knowledge of plants. And these healers were um, in the different cultures, wise men, shamans, witch doctors, or medicine men or women. Now, the isolation of pure chemicals marked the beginning of modern pharmacology. The mass production of penicillin began during World War II and minimized the number of deaths from infection. Pharmacology advanced rapidly in the second half of the 20th century as many new drugs were either discovered or developed almost daily. And the use of natural sources in the addition to or instead of artificial sources gained a wider acceptance. Alternative medicine was used more frequently. Um, and some of these are massage, aromatherapy, acupuncture, and also herbs. And again, in the second half of the 20th century, alternative medicine became more popular. Here's another checkpoint. Most U.S. soldiers died in World War I from... If you selected D, infections and accidents, you're correct. More U.S. soldiers died in World War I from infections and accidents than from actual combat injuries. Isn't that kind of crazy? The mass production of penicillin minimized the number of deaths from infection during World War II. Now looking at pharmacology in the 21st century. Pharmacogenetics, which is using a patient's genetic makeup to determine how a patient will respond to specific medications and thus individualize treatment for patients and their diseases. 
is now used in this 21st century. Genetic engineering can alter the source of drugs, allowing more to be produced. Plant hybrids may make taking multiple drugs unnecessary since scientists are able to combine drugs. And stem cell research is alive and well, and it will continue to have an impact on disease and on treatment. Sources of drugs are plants, animals, minerals, toxins, and synthesis. So let's look at some examples. So plants, foxglove, which is digoxin, a willow bark, which is aspirin. Some examples from animals, um, we can use pregnant mare's urine, and that's Primarin and lanolin, which is sheep's wool, and hormone replacements from cows and pigs. Examples of minerals are calcium, iron, zinc, magnesium, copper, potassium, and these are just some of the minerals available for use. So toxins, by definition, these are poisons for medical purposes, and they're given in low dose. An example of this would be radioactive iodine to pinpoint problems with the thyroid gland or using Botox for wrinkles. True or false? Novocaine is derived from the rose hip plant. If you said false, you are correct. It is derived from the coca plant. So categorizing medications, we have curative, prophylactic, diagnostic, palliative, replacement, and destructive as the categories for medication. Let's think about this. An example of a prophylactic medication is a flu shot. What do you think? That is true. Vaccines are given to prevent a patient from contracting a certain disease, such as influenza, and therefore these are considered prophylactic. Now our role as an MA, and I put the um, LPNs and LVNs so that you could see that uh, there are very similar roles in this area. For MAs, we will administer oral, intradermal, subcutaneous, intramuscular, rectal, otic, and ophthalmolic medications. And this is so important that we learn all about and understand these medications and their side effects and their effects on our patients. And more importantly, that we are able to do patient education for our patients so that they understand what medications that they are taking. And we even have a whole class on this next semester, uh, medication administration. So it's really important that through this pharmacology class, we gain an understanding and knowledge and we're able to apply that in order to serve our patients. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you in class. Bye-bye.